Major Cultures International. This is a global view that I'm going to be sharing with you of matrilineal, matrilocal societies, egalitarian cultures centered on women as life givers, on the kin bond. And so we're going to just dive into this. I want to start with, you know, terminology has been such a problem around even discussing this, and I'm going to explain that more as we go along. But mater, mater, mother, in Indo-European languages means mother. There's a lot of related concepts to that, including the word for womb here in Latin. And so matrilineal means a lineage through the mother. And we can see here also philosophically matrix comes to mean not only the womb, but uh, a constellation of relationships, some, a, some, a, a, con, a web, a womb within which things exist and are related to each other. You know, this is in, in, in physics and uh, mathematics. You have these, these web-like, net-like um, models that they use that word for. So, you know, the word matriarchy is something that begins to be used in the 1800s, as researchers begin to discover, wow, there are these societies that have this mother right system. That's another word that comes up. Uh, mother law is how that appears in the original German from Bachofen. And a lot of other names that feminists have come up with to try and describe these social systems. And I'm going to go into the controversy around the word matriarchy in uh, a bit. But Rian Eisler proposed Gailani, which is her fusion of the word for woman and man out of Greek, gynocentric, matristic. This is a word that Maria Gimbutas used under advisement. And uh, I, I came up with this concept of matrix cultures because I was still trying to think about something that would really signal the entire life support system within these societies. For factors, it's not just about lineage, but how, why is it? that descent through women is significant in, in the social political construction of a society. And we could say that kinship is politics at its very foundation. Who's related? You know, who are kin to each other? And so when it's around, you have to patrol women's sexuality. You know, for a patron line, you have to ensure who is the father, if you're gonna base the society on that criterion. And so when the son is reckoned through mothers, there are no illegitimate children. There's no stigma, stigma or controls on female sexuality, at least in the main. There's a lot more complexity to this as we live in history. And matrilocality is when the man goes to live with the woman and or her kin. I'm going to talk about social motherhood and some of the other uh, principles that I'm discussing here. But you know, this is what I'm calling matricultures. The society being matrilineal is not an absolute because in foraging cultures, hunter-gatherers, sometimes survival is enhanced by having both lines. So the insistence on matrilineage isn't always the only factor because uh, a bilateral society can have a lot of matricultural factors. And so this is, this is an economic aspect to some degree. Matrilocality is very important because the woman's residence is around her kin. So she has this social support around her. Egalitarian by sex and by class. I mean, you do see matrilineal societies that are class ranked, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the historical transformations of this pattern. The social core is around kinship. So it's sister brother, not the legal tie of husband wife and all the authoritarian things that go to enforce that. These cultures tend to be communitarian. Uh, there's not private property. The entire kinship shares land and house, and that can vary. Houses might be very small and, and you know, not much to them, very, very impermanent. But, you know, just talking about large patterns. And social motherhood, and what this means is it's not the single solitary biological mother, but a whole spectrum of kin, the sisters and also the brothers or the uncles in the older generation who care for the children collectively. And so you will see children addressing aunties as mother in a lot of these systems. Shared responsibility, this is huge for women. When female elders are important, women's ceremonial leadership, very strong presence of female divinities and ancestors. Uh, they're relaxed about gender uh, 
you know, the, the rules are not absolute. There is flexibility there. Uh, the enforcement is not authoritarian. There is no enforcement at all in some cases. Sex, sex is not stigmatized. Divorce is easy. There's no enforcement of marriage as a, an economic arrangement. And there's a very strong ethic of cooperation and non-aggression. So let's, that matriarchy is this word that, you know, we use in the much disputed term I'll talk about in a second, but these are indigenous names of some of those societies. Uh, the Adat Ibu in Manankabao, which is in Sumatra. Marumakatayam, sister's children, is the name for the system and also for the clan, the designating matrilineal clans of the Nayars and, and various other groups in, not just in Kerala, but in, in Tamil Nadu. Taubwaraga, the way of the ancestors. And this is in uh, the Southwestern Pacific, the path of life, this little tiny island of Roti, which is matrilineal. And this last one, this is not a matrilineal society, but this, these terms sometimes also survive in patrilineal systems. And so here's another name for the, the matrilineal relationship or for the clan itself, Susu, in east of uh, Papua New Guinea. And then among the Chickasaw, these are Muscogean people, Itabapisili, I have no idea how they pronounce that, but those who suckle together so that taking milk from the breast of any woman of the lineage is considered to constitute kinship. This means that adoption can take place so that an adult man will be put to the breast of a female elder symbolically that he is receiving essence and now belongs to the kindred. So this is not an absolutism, but there are social rituals that can be done to include someone in the kindred. So words for clan in a lot of these matrilineal societies are min womb or of one womb. And these ones down here are not matrilineal systems currently, although there's a lot of uh, scholarship pointing to that being in the distant Hebrew past, for example, uh, matrilineal. I'm not too sure about the shore either, but all these words of one womb indicate a social bond around the mother. And so we also find writings in patrilineal societies like Chinese, also the uh, Romans, other groups, referring to a previous time of lineage through the mother. And so this is from the Zhuangzi, people cared for their mothers, not their fathers. I don't think he means that, he, that they don't love their fathers if they know them, <laughs> but they, the, the central social organization is maternal. And then interesting, he adds, they did not think of harming one another. So this non-aggression element is highlighted 